Welcome to Your Talk with the Cunning. My name is Mark Angelo slash Maritza. And, and I'm Lena slash Paul. Cunning, whatever, whatever. whatever that works. I'm not All sure these labels how that looks or sounds or whatever, but that's who we are. Well, that's who we are. And yeah, I was a little private investigator. Today we found out some really crazy things. Um Regarding this individual who's been on Facebook for what, gosh, since 2011, and you've known them since, or you thought you knew them since 2014. Well, you know, the thing about being online is that you never know who people are unless you meet them face to face. Exactly. And I would like to say to all of you out there that you can rest assured that we are who we say we are. Um, you can find us online. You can find our name. You can find my pre my pre transition name. You can find my post transition name. You can find our videos. You can find us on our journey. We are who we are. But what happens is that there are people out there that love to play games. They love to do these things where people think that you're someone else and well, in this case, this person, their name is or supposedly, and they basically are not who they say they are. They're actually taking on the identity of a porn star that basically, you know, yeah, interesting. Interesting stuff. Interesting but... stuff. They even like communicated with us when we were doing a fast, and they were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the fast with you guys," you oh, know. Yeah. And you were like, "This just doesn't seem like it's a real person." Even back then, I didn't think it was yeah. a real person because the pictures that they would post were always so seductive and you know just so risque, and they were just always like showing off their body in a way that was like, and their and their features were so. Nice, you know, and genetic woman looking that it's like, you know, I mean, it just didn't feel right to me. Oh, so, all yeah. part of the deception, you know, that we see in this community. It is, and it's very much tied to these sexual addictions that people have. And you could say what you want, um, those of you that are transgender and don't believe that, you know, autogynophilia exists or that people have, you know, that people don't have mental disorders in this community. But obviously, when you're taking the name of a avowed Hungarian porn <laughs> star by the name of Addie Sweet, and you are taking all of their images and repurposing them for your Facebook page and you're showing all these you know, um, you know, you're not showing the really risque pictures, but you're showing the cutesy ones, you know, but every single time it's yeah. like, you know, what is going on? It's crazy. And it's, it's crazy as what we're seeing with so-called gender confused children who are being literally coerced to threaten their parents with suicide unless they're about to transition. Yeah, and that is something that is not really true, you know. I mean, that is not really true because what you have are a lot of times you have these older transitioners who or cross-dressers or people that just are infatuated with anything trans. Oh, wait a minute. We got a call. Let's see here. Hello, caller. State your name and where you're calling from. Okay. Hello? Can't really hear you. Nope, can't hear. Are you there? Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? Okay. All right, no. Well, one, two, three, gone. Um, so, as we were saying, yeah, you've got these people who are basically um, wanting the dream to be alive, and 
these innocent kids come in who are confused and stuff. They go to a Reddit board and they like this person, Joshua Alcorn, who his mom didn't even know the name Leela that was being used for their name, you know, basically. They go there and they're asking advice and all these people are just saying, tell your parents that you're going to commit suicide if they don't allow you to do whatever you want to do. And it's like, you know, let them know that, you know, they're being abusive to you. And, you know, it's like, this is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. And gosh, what's going on? It's this person. Hello, are you still there, caller? So, yeah, and I found this really interesting article, um, that fourth wave now, which always have some really great information, that has been written by um, Michael Bailey and Ray Blanchard. And they really want to straighten out this whole lie about the fear that parents have that if they don't allow their child to transition, they're going to have a dead child, basically. Right. And that's what I was talking about where, you know, they are coercing these kids. These older people online are coercing these kids to say these things and they're not true, you know, but they want them to think that they're true. Now, you know, these things are not as simple as these people would like you to believe it is, you know, this whole lie of suicide or transition. You know, definitely. Well, it's increasingly common for gender dysphoric adolescents and mental health professionals to claim that transition is necessary to prevent suicide. The tragic case of Leon Alcum is often cited as the rallying cry, transition or else. The guy originally, Joshua, was a gender dysphoric natal male who committed suicide at age 17, blaming their parents for failing to support their gender transition and forcing them into Christian reparative therapy. Subsequently, various Leland laws banning conversion therapy for gender dysphoria, among other things, have been passed or are being considered across the United States. The suicide of one child is every parent's nightmare. Given the choice for our child between gender transition and suicide, we would certainly choose transition, but the best scientific evidence suggests that gender transition is not necessary to prevent suicide. We provided more detail as I below, but here's the bottom line. Children, most commonly adolescents, who threaten to commit suicide rarely do so, although they are more likely to kill themselves than children who do not threaten suicide. Two, mental health problems, including suicide, are associated with some forms of gender dysphoria, but suicide is rare, even among gender dysphoric persons. Three, there is no persuasive evidence that gender transition reduces gender dysphoric children's likelihood of killing themselves. Four, the idea that mental health problems, including suicidality, are caused by gender dysphoria rather than the other way around, i.e. mental health and personal personality issues cause a vulnerability to experience gender dysphoria. It's currently popular and politically correct. It is, however, unproven and as likely to be false. That's true. Suicide versus suicidality versus non-suicidal self-injury. Well, suicide is a rare event in the United States. In 2014, about 13 out of every 100,000 persons committed suicide. Suicide was common among middle-aged white males who accounted for about 7 out of 10 known suicides. It's helpful to distinguish at least four different things. Completed suicide means death by suicide. Suicidality means either thinking about committing suicide or attempting suicide. Non-suicidal self-injury means injuring oneself, most often by cutting one's skin without intending to die. Finally, mental illness includes a variety of conditions from depression to conduct disorder to personality disorders, such as borderline personality disorder, to schizophrenia, some of which are especially strongly associated with completed suicide and suicidality, others of which are more associated 
with non-suicidal self-injury. And notice that all these borderline personality disorders, schizophrenia, all of these are diagnoses that are very much part of gender dysphoric people. Obviously, completed suicide is what we are most worried about. Because it is so rare, however, and because it's often difficult to know about the dead person's motivation for suicide, it has been especially difficult to study. There are fewer studies focusing on gender dysphoria and completed suicide than on gender dysphoria and either suicidally or non-suicidal self-injury. Studies of suicidally must rely on self-reported. For example, someone must report that they are or have been thinking about committing suicide, and this complicates interpretations of results. Maybe some people sometimes are especially likely to say they have been suicidal, even if they haven't been. Also, there is more than one kind of gender dysphoria. We think there are three. This is a topic for another day, and we should not expect this to be identical for all types. Two large systematic studies of complete suicide and gender dysphoria have been published, one for the Netherlands, the other from Sweden. Notably, both countries are socially liberal, and both studies were conducted fairly recently, 97 and 2011. Both studies focused on patients who had been treated medically at national gender clinics. These patients all either began or completed medical gender transition, and we refer to them as transsexuals. We don't know how many other patients there were from each of the three types we believe to be In the Dutch study, suicide data were of male to female transsexual, natal males transitioned to females treated with cross-sex hormones, and many also with surgery. Of 816 male to female transsexuals, 13, that's 1.6%, completed suicide. This was nine times higher than expected. Still, suicide was rare in the sample. The Swedish study found an even larger increase in the rate of suicide, 19 times higher among the transsexual than among the non-transsexual control group. Still, only 10 out of 324 transsexuals. That means 3.1% of the group committed suicide. Again, still rare. Note that both studies were of gender dysphoric person who transitioned. As such, their results hardly support the curative effect of transition, which is what I've always said. You know, they transition to prevent suicide. There's more suicide after transition than there is before. The Dutch and Swedish studies were of adults whose gender dysphoria may or may not have begun in childhood. No published study has focused on only childhood onset cases. However, psychologist Kenneth Becker has tracked the outcome of more than 150 childhood onset cases treated at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health into adolescents and young adulthood. He has generously shared with us in a personal communication his outcome data for suicide. Out of those more than 150 cases followed, only one had committed suicide. Furthermore, Dr. Zucker's understanding based on parent reports is that this suicide was not due to gender dysphoria, but rather to an unrelated psychiatric illness. On the, other, on the one hand, one suicide out of 150 cases is more than we'd expect by chance. On the other hand, it is a rare outcome among gender dysphoric children and adults. So studies of suicidally and non-suicidal self-injury, people who commit suicide were suicidal before they did so, but most people who are suicidal do not commit suicide. Suicidal is necessarily a big word. Encompassing intents to commit suicide and thinking about suicide both in a wide range of intensity. Furthermore, most studies would include a suicidal someone who falsely reports a past or present intention to commit suicide. To me, it's like getting attention. You know? Well, you know, back in 2014, two months before this kid ended up taking their life, um, they talked about having problems and wanting to commit suicide. And, you know, it's like when you feed exactly from the outside, and people feed the causation for suicide, and, you know, they give it a they, they give it a, a description and a cause, then they can run with it, the people that are being affected. And they find their identity now in being suicidal. Exactly. Why would anyone falsely report being suicidal? One reason is to influence the behavior of others. Saying that one is suicidal 
usually gets attention sympathy. For example, it can be a way of impressing others with the seriousness of one's feelings or needs. Although this possibility has not been directly studied, reporting suicidality may sometimes be a strategy for advancing a social cause. And I've seen that a lot. As they did mm-hmm. when when this kid ended up committing suicide. Mm-hmm. Even President Obama mentioned Leela's Law yeah, and the wanting, law. Yeah. And, and it became a rallying cry to not just, you know, prevent suicide, but to prevent gender um, conversion therapy. And I think it was almost like a martyr type, like they, the, the terrorists that strap the bombs, you know, and they go with, you know, it's almost like they, they got programmed, like, do this for the cause. You know, that kind of thing. Anyway, according to data from Centers of Disease Control, the rates of intentional but non-fatal self-injury peaked during adolescence about 450 per 100,000 girls and a bit fewer than 250 per 100,000 boys. These rates are much higher than the 13 per 100,000 American completed suicides per year. And remember that suicide is more common among adults than adolescents. So it is reasonable to assume that most adolescents' self-injury is not intended to end one's life. We're not suggesting that parents ignore child, children's self-injury. We simply mean that self-injury often has motives besides genuine suicidal intent. Not surprisingly, given the increased rates of suicide among gender dysphoric adults, suicidality, i.e. self-reported suicidal thoughts and past suicide attempts, quote-unquote, is also higher among the transgender. One recent survey statistically analyzed by the Williams Institute reported that 41% of the transgender adults had ever made a suicide attempt, compared with a rate of 4.6 for controls. This survey recruited respondents using convenient sampling. However, and this may have inflated the rate of suicidal reports. Additionally, the authors of the survey included the following admirable disclaimer. Data from the U.S. population at large, however, show clear demographic differences between suicide attempters and those who die by suicide. While almost 80% of all suicide deaths occurring among males, about 75% of suicide attempts are made by females. Adolescents who overall have a relatively low suicide rate of about 7 per 100,000 people accounts for a substantial proportion of suicide attempts, making perhaps 100 or more attempts for every suicide death. By contrast, the elderly have a much higher suicide rate, about 15 per 100,000, but make only four attempts for every complete suicide. Although making a suicide attempt generally increases the risk of subsequent suicidal behavior, six separate studies that have followed suicide attempters for periods of five to 37 years found death by suicide to occur in seven to 13% of the samples. We do not know whether these general population patterns hold true for transgender people, but in the absence of supporting data, we should be especially careful not to extrapolate findings about suicide attempts among transgender adults to imply conclusions about completed suicide in this population. So is transition the answer after all? In a very recent study, psychologist Christina Olson reported that parents who supported their gender dysphoric children's social transition rated them just as mentally healthy as their non-gender dysphoric siblings. Furthermore, parents' reports suggested that socially transitioned gender dysphoric children were not less mentally healthy than a random sample would be expected to be. This research falls far short of negating, of explaining the findings we have reviewed above. First, it was relatively small, including only 73 gender dysphoric children. Second, families were recruited via convenient sampling, increasing the likelihood of various selection biases. For example, it is possible that especially mentally healthy families volunteer for this kind of research. Third, the assessment was a brief snapshot. We we would expect socially transitioned gender dysphoric children to be faring better at the snapshot compared to the children struggling with their gender dysphoria. There's little doubt that at first gender dysphoric children are happier if allowed to socially transition. Young gender dysphoric children do not show that many psychological or behavior problems aside from their gender issues. The aforementioned study by Kenneth Zucker's research group showed that mental health problems, including suicidality, increase with age. Perhaps this won't happen with Olson's participants, but 
it's too soon to know. So why is gender dysphoria associated with mental problems, including sociality? Well, we don't know. The current conventional wisdom is that gender dysphoria creates a need for gender transition, that it frustrated causes all the problems, that a convenient position for transition clinicians and activists, but they simply don't know that this is true. Furthermore, both are past experience study mental illness scientifically, and specific findings related to gender dysphoria suggest that conventional wisdom is unlikely to be correct. As an example, Leela Alcorn suicide, like most suicides, is tragic. But they appear to have had problems that were not obviously caused by their gender dysphoria. They posted as Joshua, his male identity, on Tumblr. And literally, such a bitch. Shit happens in my life that isn't even really that bad. And all I do is complain about it to everyone around me and threaten to commit suicide mm-hmm. and make them feel sorry for me. Then they view me as a subhuman and someone they have to take care of like a child. Then when they don't meet my each and every single expectation, I latch out at them and make them feel like shit and like they weren't good enough to take care of me. Since I can only find imperfections in myself, I try my hardest to find imperfections in everyone around me and use them as a way to one-up myself and make others feel bad to make myself look better. This is the trans narrative in a nutshell. That's what... Joshua did. Yeah, but this is exactly what most in the LGBT community do. Yeah. You know, pretty much. Sophisticated causal analysis of mental illness and life experiences has invariably shown that things are more complex than previously assumed. For example, although depression is certainly caused by adverse life experiences, those vulnerable to depression have a tendency to generate their own stressful life experiences. So it's not as simple as depression being caused by life experiences alone. Also, depression has a considerable genetic influence. Similarly, women with borderline personality disorder, BPD, report that they have experienced disproportionate childhood sexual abuse, CSA. And many clinicians and researchers have assumed that BSA causes BPD. But one just can't assume the causal direction goes that way. One must eliminate alternative possibilities. Recent sophisticated studies suggest that, in fact, childhood sexual abuse does not cause borderline personality disorder. Research to understand the link between gender dysphoria and various mental problems, including suicidality, a completed suicide will take time. There's already plenty of reason, however, to doubt that conventional wisdom that all the trouble is caused by delaying the gender transition of gender dysphoric person. We have already mentioned the fact that transition adults who have been gender dysphoric, i.e. transsexuals, have increased rates of completed suicide. Their transition did not prevent this, Evidently, suicide and threats to commit suicide can be socially contagious. Thus, social contagion may play an important role in both society and gender dysphoria itself. Autism is a risk factor for both gender dysphoria and suicide. No one, to our knowledge, believes that gender dysphoria causes autism. Conclusions are parents with gender dysphoric children almost always want the best for them. But many of these parents do not immediately conclude that instant gender transition is the best solution. It serves these parents poorly to exaggerate the likelihood of their children's suicide or to assert that suicide or suicidality would be the parent's fault. And it's like this quote, I'm literally such a bitch. Shit happens to me in my life that it's even really that bad and all I do is complain. I mean... That is what I see constantly, you know? Absolutely. And then it's like they try to, to um, have everyone with the word cater to them in their every move. And, and I can imagine how bad shit a parent must feel having to deal with a child that has behavioral issues and they're threatening the parents all the time if they don't get their way. And you see it all the time in these gender-confused children. Well, the thing about... The thing about... Lila, uh, Joshua Alcorn's parents, is that Joshua was never really, you know, an expressing type of transgender person. He was gay. 
I mean, Joshua, the mom, didn't even know the name Leela exactly. until after Joshua died. I mean, it was like, you know, it was like a shock to her that it was this extreme, you know. Yeah, it's like the parents learned all about the stuff after the fact. It's just, you know, pretty, pretty sad, if you ask me. I mean, but I think, you know, also what what could have been um, a cause for, you know, Paul Corrin's problems was the fact that they were um, experiencing, you know, their sexual preferences and stuff, and they were trying to come out, but they were part of a very, very Christian family that did not agree, you know. That presents a major issue as well, you know, um, Christianity or any kind of religious belief that, you know, makes the person not really want to come out as gay and rather come out as trans, thinking that that's a much better alternative. And we saw that in that Trans Kids um, special. If you get a chance to watch it on the BBC, it's available, um, you know, on the Internet if you look for it. Uh, But basically one of the parents, you know, was ashamed of his son you know, that he ran like a girl or something. And now after transitioning, now he can be proud of his daughter, you know, because that's how girls run, apparently. You know, it's like, it's so, like, stereotypical of what gender is supposed to be acted out as. And, you know, he didn't want a gay son. No, he did not. He didn't want a flamboyant boy. Oh, we'll be uh, having our live show tomorrow on YouTube. And, um... Tomorrow, the show tomorrow will actually be covering, you know, explain the different types of transgender. There's two types, and especially one main type, which many of you know as age peers in the Western um, society. Um, ways of increasing dopamine naturally. Um, we usually have a spiritual corner that Linda's in charge of. I'm not sure what she's going to talk about. Um, depopulation is an assault that's actually happened to the human race. Dangers of synthetic sense to include cancer, asthma, and kidney damage, and more. And big pharma toxic drug will kill over 45,000 more people than global warming by the year 2100, scientific discovered. And on Wednesday's show, we're going to talk about um, drugs that kill in the transition world. That's a lot. Stuff. And yeah. I'm going to be uh, bringing some really important, you know, stuff from that spiritual corner that, you know, people may not be aware of, you know, and it will be really interesting. I guarantee that. And, and I think that, you know, the lack of true spirituality, not religiosity, but spirituality is, what, is what's creating such disconnect in, in our own identity and in our in the way that we actually um, involve ourselves with other people in life and how we view ourselves. Yeah, and it's important to realize that, you know, this is about getting and growing to become a more wholesome person. Okay, we're going to be going off air in 43 seconds. It will continue on on demand, so if you hear us cut off, not to worry. You've still got another 15 minutes of recording time, so... You know, um, um, those of you that are listening live, you'll be able to listen to the remainder after the show um, finishes and gets uh, put on demand. So you were saying? No, I was just saying that, you know, so many times it's it's basically such a uh, focus on don't do this, don't do that, don't be this way, don't be that way. Um, impending doom is coming your way if, but... The, the reality is the focus should be instead on what brings life, what, what changes are coming to you, what beautiful things are going to be happening in your life as you grow, as you understand, as you make mistakes, for crying out loud, as we all do, and we're able to grow from them, and we're able to learn from those mistakes, and we're able to become better people. Definitely. Um, so... You know, I'm not quite sure if this thing is actually like they used to do before because they used to have a, a recording time. But, um, yeah, catch us tomorrow night on, on YouTube and, um, and again, Wednesday and Friday. So we're going to be having show times four days a week. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in.
We love you. But remember to always love yourselves too. Goodbye. Panera now delivers, so you can order good, clean food right to your office, or door, or porch, or backyard, or front yard, or apartment, or dorm, or castle, or shop, or worksite, or wherever. For lunch, dinner, and everywhere in between. Click the banner to order or visit PaneraBread.com. Participating locations only. Panera. Food as it should be. Panera now delivers, so you can order good, clean food right to your office, or door, or porch, or backyard, or front yard, or apartment, or dorm, or castle, or shop, or worksite, or wherever. For lunch, dinner, and everywhere in between. Click the banner to order or visit PaneraBread.com. Participating locations only. Panera. Food as it should be.